In this video, we are going to see how to import data from MongoDB to your Google Sheet using Google Apps Script and Stitch service provided by MongoDB. So let me go to MongoDB and I have already created a cluster and the name of the cluster is cluster zero. Inside the collection tab, I have already created a database Google and inside the database it just contains one collection and the collection name is employees and this contains few records and this is the data that I am going to import to my Google Sheet here. So let's see how to do that. So to import data from MongoDB to Google Sheet, you need to set up a connection between MongoDB and Google Sheet. So, so to create a REST API, you have to use the Stitch service. Under the service, you can find this option Stitch. Just click on it. And you need to create a new application. Let's name this as Google. And this application will be linked to a cluster zero uh, so now i'm having only one cluster and that is cluster zero and the stitch service name is mongodb atlas i'm going to keep the default value as it is and the deployment model should be global and i'm not going to alter the primary region so just go ahead and click on create so now the application is created and if you scroll down here you can find option add a service just click on add a service and you have to add a rest api service so that you can connect to mongodb through api so i'm going to use a http just click on it and give any service name so let me put google sheet hyphen connect as a service name and click on add service and the service is successfully created so let me go ahead and create our incoming webhook and if you scroll up i'm going to keep the name webhook zero i'm not going to alter anything and authentication just go with the system and if you want to log function argument you can enable that but i don't need right now and this is the webhook url and this is the url which uh, we need fetch the data from mongodb and the HTTP method should be get because we are going to get data from MongoDB. Respond with result, yes, turn it on. And request validation, if you want additional validation, just go with these two options. I don't need any additional authorization right now. So I'm just going to stick with the default one. And finally click on save. So once this is saved, you will be taken to the functional editor. And this is where you need to add your own custom function so i'm going to write a simple function that will return the data inside the collection so let me start with export equal to function and this function is going to accept payload as an argument and i'm going to create an object mongodb And I'm going to use a mongodb hyphen atlas stitch services. If you remember, this is the name that we have given to the stitch service. Let me zoom that so you can see that clearly. And I'm going to create another object, let's say collection. I'm going to get collection object here. So to get the collection object, I need to pass a database name. And my database name is Google. So if you go here, maybe in another tab, let me cross verify that. So if you see here, my database name is Google and the collection name is employees. So under the Google database, I need a collection. And the name of the collection is employees. 
that's it i'm done i'm going to return the data i'm basically need to return this collection data so find will find the data with a desired condition but i want all the records so i'm not going to give any condition just an empty curly braces and i want the data in the form of array so that i can iterate through the data on a google abstract so to return in the form of array i'm going to use a method to array and that's it so you can just add missing semicolon and you can simply fix the error once this is done click on save and at the bottom you can find an option run click on that run so we are getting the error stating cannot access member db of undefined because if you see here i have given a wrong service name it should be atlas there was a typo and click on run and we got the data so this is the data that we have in the collection tab let me show you so if you see here the name designation of few of the employees here and we got all those details here so our function is working fine so uh, if you made any changes to this function you have to click on save once again and after you have and after you have successfully saved just click on review and deploy the changes accept the confirmation and redeploy the updated one that's it all the things that we need to do from the mongodb is done now we can go to our google sheet and write a google app script to fetch so this mongodb data let's see how to do that and this is my google sheet and inside the google sheet open a script editor and i'm going to import data so let me switch to another gs file so if you don't have this gs file go to file new and create a script file and rename that to import data so let me create a function and the name of the function is import mongodb data so i'm going to reuse some of the codes here which i have already elaborated in the previous video so just copy and go here to get the sheet 1 access and now uh, i'm going to use uh, another variable let's say get data and this is where we are going to uh, retrieve the data in the collection so to get that we need to make an api call from your google app script to mongodb so to make an api call use url fetch app dot fetch and you have to pass the url to get this url go back to the mongodb under the settings tab you can find the webhook url click here to copy the one so let me show you how to get that if you are in the home page so this is your home page to get the webhook url you have to go to stitch and inside the stitch you have to go to your application and inside the application go to third party service click on the service name that you have created and go inside the webhook and go to the settings and this is where you can find your webhook url so i'm going to put that here so make sure that you properly closed with a angular bracket and now it will return the data and i'm going to get the data in a text format so i'm going to use one more method get context text if you see that the return type is string so i will use that one and i'm going to convert the text in the form of json let's name this as a json object 
to do that use json.parse and pass the data here now let's check whether we are getting the json object or not save this one and execute the script go to view logs and we got all the details in the form of array so inside the array we have an objects so this is the first object and this is the second one and this is the third one and fourth one we got all the records from mongodb let's see how to populate this record in the google sheet so i'm just going to remove this one i'm going to iterate through each object one by one using a simple for loop so i should be lesser than json object dot length and i plus pass so i can make use of this sheet one to refer sheet one I'm going to use a method get range. So during the first iteration, the row should be two because the first row is a header row and i is zero. So I have to add i plus two, which means we can target the second row during the first iteration itself. And I want the ID to be populated on the column A. So I'm just putting one here set value i'm going to use this method to populate the json object here so during the first iteration it will get the first object inside the array and if you see the key name is underscore id so i'm just going to put that here and i'm going to reuse this for the remaining two columns so the simple change and i just need to replace the column number and the object key value one is name and another one is designation so that's it now let's execute and see how it works it executed successfully yeah the data is populated on our google sheet as we want but if you see here it populate another object so just to rectify this i'm going to take the key name here and i'm going to add the key name so that i will get so that i will get the exact id here so now execute and see. So this is successfully executed. And if you see here, I got only the ID and the name and the designation from MongoDB. And that's it for this video. If you like this video, give thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any doubt, just drop your doubts in the comment section. That's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.